thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and Senator Cornyn for uh, for holding the hearing today at the subcommittee and their witnesses for their or our witnesses for the willingness to testify. Um, let me just make a few observations, if I might, about the importance of alternative energy uh, tax incentives and what they've meant in a state like South Dakota. Many of the tax incentives that we're discussing today. Uh, have traditionally enjoyed broad bipartisan support. The production tax credit for wind energy, the tax credit for biodiesel, the investment tax credit for vehicle refueling property are just a few examples of provisions that I've supported in the past because I believe that they have strengthened America's domestic energy supply. While our nation uh, will remain dependent on fossil fuels in the near term, alternative sources of energy clearly should be part of an all of the above strategy and approach to achieving America's energy independence. In my state of South Dakota, for example, we've seen the positive impacts of tax incentives on the growth of the ethanol industry and the jobs associated with that. Today, South Dakota has 15 plants which produce over a billion gallons of ethanol, about 10 percent of America's ethanol supply, and roughly 40 percent of the corn we grow goes into ethanol production. The jobs and economic growth associated with this industry were spurred in large part by the Blunders tax credit. I hope that once the existing Blunders credit has expired, we can continue to find ways to encourage the production and use of advanced biofuels, especially through incentives for infrastructure, which will give consumers more choices at the pump. Another example of the energy tax incentive important to my state is the wind production tax credit. Uh, it's scheduled to expire at the end of 2012. South Dakota ranks fourth in the nation in the amount of wind power uh, added in 2010. South Dakota's wind farms now generate enough electricity to power 240,000 homes, and the state's future potential for wind energy is enormous. According to the National Renewable Energy Lab, South Dakota wind resources could provide 310 times the state's current electricity needs if they were fully exploited. But as the witnesses have stated today, short-term incentives do not give businesses the certainty that they need to make long-term multi-year investments. Consider the example of Dakota Plains Energy, a business that's based in Aberdeen, South Dakota, that's currently in the fourth year of development of what will ultimately be a 300 megawatt wind farm in Campbell County in north central South Dakota. Because the first stage of this wind farm is unlikely to be completed until 2013, after the wind tax credit is scheduled to expire, it's becoming increasingly difficult for Dakota Plains to secure financing going forward. And this situation impacts not only wind developers, but suppliers as well. Suppliers such as molded fiberglass, which is a South Dakota manufacturer of wind turbine blades that will have fewer orders as uncertainty related to the expiration of the tax credit increases. Clearly, American businesses need greater certainty in order to be able to plan their investments, and that means that Congress has got to do a better job of enacting long-term tax provisions rather than one or two-year extensions. At the same time, however, we need to be realistic about our deficit situation. As such, I hope that this committee will begin to examine how we can reform our energy tax incentives to ensure the taxpayers are getting the maximum bang for their tax dollar. This might mean phasing out some subsidies that are no longer necessary or changing the structure of certain tax incentives to make them more efficient. And I realize that this sort of major overhaul is perhaps best suited to a fundamental tax reform effort, but I don't think we can afford to wait until that time to begin uh, this process. So I'm hopeful that our discussion today, Mr. Chairman, at this subcommittee can carry forward into uh, next year at the full committee. And let me just, uh, with that uh, observation, if I might ask a question of the entire panel, which has to do with the need for predictability. I think many of you have testified to that today so that businesses can plan multi-year investments. I'd be interested in knowing from each of you if you'd be willing to consider reforms to the energy tax provisions that you care about the most, even if it meant a somewhat less generous incentive in exchange for long-term permanency and predictability. Mr. Sen Senator, thank you very much for, uh, for your comments. Uh, I'd be happy to try to address your, uh, your question on behalf of my company, which participates in the biodiesel industry. Um, we see enormous value in having some degree of price certainty and market certainty, and we would certainly be supportive of a tax policy that provided predictability into the future, even, even if it meant it came at less support. The key thing, for, key thing for our industry is that investors need to understand uh, exactly what the pricing mechanisms, mechanisms are in the future and exactly what you can rely on as you invest your capital. Having a longer term horizon on what that looks like will encourage investment. 
The other issue that we face is that in the petroleum industry, working capital needs are very, very, are very, very high relative to, to ultimate margins. So you look at, uh, at biodiesel, this year alone our company has, spent, has manufactured over a quarter million dollars worth of, of product. Um, you can't raise working capital to support that, 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 that amount of, um, of production activity without there being some degree of certainty as, as to what the pricing structure is in, is in the market on, on, a, on a longer term basis. So we would certainly encourage a longer term extension and certainty in, uh, in tax policy. Okay. Anybody else care to comment on that? Senator Martha Wirsch with Bestus Wind Systems. The wind industry would be very interested in working with you to look at that longer term policy that you suggest. We do want to emphasize, however, that for us, the PTC is, is done today. Although it doesn't extend, uh, it doesn't end until the end of 2012, business decisions are being made today. So we would need extensions today to bridge us to that discussion and the time period it will take to complete that. Thank you. And I was just Coleman. I would just add that uh, I think from our perspective, long-term predictability is the key. I mean, what we are looking for as investors is an equitable, very clear code that allows us to figure out where to invest on a long-term basis. And I think Dr. Thorning mentioned that that technology was really what has driven this shale gas boom. What's interesting is that technology was something that was developed over 30 years ago out of DOE. So it's taken a long time to get that into the marketplace. And for us to invest in new technologies, whether it's in gas or whether it's in renewables, we need that kind of, of lead time. Um, you know, I think Senator Wyden mentioned that, that there's this crazy quilt of, of incentives out there. And I think from an investment perspective, that's the hardest thing to navigate. So what we're trying to understand is how do you simplify it? How do you create it so that it's a little bit more technology neutral across the board and allows us to navigate it in a way where we can actually invest with some sort of reliability in that long term. And that, and that requires predictability, but also requires uh, simplicity and transparency. Okay. Thank you. I see my time has expired, Mr. Chairman. I think we have a vote on. So thank you all. Thank you all very much.